My name is Sister Wes, and I am from Sholo, Arizona. Probably more of an ostrich. I'm just going to go with ostrich, because they're kind of odd looking, so I'd probably go with an ostrich. Probably a frying pan, just because in cartoons you always see them like, they have one of those big hearty skillets and just like whack somebody with it. So I'd probably go with that. Those seem pretty useful in situations <laughs> if pirates ever decide to attack. The most fun part about missionary work here in the Tallahassee Mission would be, for me, the whole experience of it. Um, being in a new place, being with new people, experiencing a new culture. Um, it differs a lot from back home, even though I'm from the States, but just in the States there's a wide variety of culture and it's cool to see and experience that. Yeah, so overall I really enjoyed the Florida Tallahassee Mission. One of the biggest things that I would tell them is just jump right in. The more you're hesitant to jump in and just get in there, the harder it's going to be to adjust to it. Um, that's been my experience. Like I'm more timid. I'm more like feel it out first, kind of adjust to it, and then hop in. But it's easier if you can just leap and just go for it. The times that I've leaped and I've gone for it go much better than like holding back a little bit to wait to see how it goes. I'd say personally to invite others to come into Christ means that I don't know how to put it into words quite well. More of it's eternal salvation. It's not just, hey, we have this awesome book, the Book of Mormon, you want to learn about it? It's let me teach you something, let me share something with you that can help your life in so many different ways. Let me share something that I find so wonderful that I said find so special and precious to me that I know it'll help you and help you through like anything that you're going through. That's that's how I see it. That's the biggest difference that I've seen since being out in the mission is it's more than just, hey, we have a message. It's we have eternal life. We have salvation that you can use in your life. Well, we've been serving on the Florida State University campus mainly. So that sea of people is very real. I mean, you're walking around and there's like hundreds of people around you and like, who do I talk to? I don't even know. It's like crazy. Uh, but having that um, mindset that these are all brothers and sisters, these are all people who need this and with the testimony that's grown of that, um, you're more able to see them as your brothers and sisters and be like, okay, how will this affect their lives? How will this help them so much more? And why is it they need this? Why is it important for me to just jump right in and open my mouth and talk to them about it? You gotta follow the spirit. <laughs> That's the only way that we do anything on campus. Uh, whether it's like Tallahassee Community College or FAMU or FSU, it's all just, you know, follow the spirit. He'll direct you. You may not understand why you're walking in a direction or why you're taking a different path, um, but there's somebody down that path you just say hey how's it going and then a conversation strikes up and then you find someone who needs the gospel so it really just comes down to like opening your mouth just being friendly the biggest difference that I've seen between someone who knows Heavenly Father and someone who doesn't um, is their willingness to like open their heart and hear the message that we have to share a lot of people on campus they are like oh no I don't I don't believe in Jesus Christ I don't think he really exists but the people who do believe in Jesus Christ or have that testimony of that God is our loving Heavenly Father they're so much more open to like talk with you about it and to really learn and you kind of get to like open their understanding just a little bit more which piques their curiosity and which opens so many doors for them to really learn about it Knowing that I'm a child of God has made the biggest difference in my life. I can definitely tell you that. Um, just through like growing up and having friends who weren't raised in the church, um, it gives you that purpose knowing like where am I going? Why am I doing the things that I do? And it gives you that basis, that foundation to really fall back on, especially when times are tough and when you know you don't understand what's going on around you. And it also means that you got a family, not only here on earth, but eternally and throughout the ages. Like we say, Heavenly Father, we say He's our loving Heavenly Father, and it's so true. 
because we are, a child, we, are a ch we are a child of God. He loves us so much that he wants us to make it back to him. And family is everything to me, so that's probably like my favorite thing about the gospel is that I'm a child of God and I have an eternal family. I definitely think there's times everybody goes through and on my mission, I definitely think there's times not so much doubted, I guess, more questioned it. And I think that's what's made my testimony grow because we're here and we're teaching people about all these things. But I'm like, am I really believing what I'm saying? Like, am I really believing that I'm a child of God? And that's something that you always have to like work on and pray about because there'll be times where I'm like, what is this? What am I, what am I saying? And just like kind of sending it out and praying about it and feeling that Holy Ghost testify of that to me is that testimony builder. Like, I know I'm doing what's right. I know being here in the Florida Tallahassee mission is where I'm supposed to be. Even though I may not know why yet or I haven't met somebody who I felt like this is why I came here. But I definitely know it's true, or else I wouldn't be here today. The atonement to me, now that I've been on my mission, is something so much more tangible. Um, before coming out to Florida, it was always something a little bit more abstract. It was the, it was still that peace and relief after you repent, after you said, "I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this again." But with the mission, it's given me more of a way to really do that, to say, all right, this is how I use the atonement, this is how I can actually feel it, and feel it changing me, and also feel like I'm actually taking steps towards it, instead of just feeling like I'm repenting. It's helped me because, being away from my family, by giving me that strength to rely on, knowing that my Savior, Jesus Christ, he's gone through all this, he's gone through all the homesickness, the uneasy, like, not sure feelings that you may have. You're like, I'm walking up to this complete strangers. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, those, all those feelings that you have, especially being a new missionary. I mean, I still feel like I'm really new. This is my first transfer. So <laughs> I'm like kind of all over the place still, but being able to access that atonement, it's given me that stability. It's given me that reassurance that even though I'm so far away from home, I'm doing what I know to be right and I'm helping my Heavenly Father. It's essential to know His doctrine because without it, it there's really nothing, at least in my opinion, like to give me that peace. Um, everything in the Gospel, everything that Jesus Christ has in His doctrine, all the like the five major steps of faith, repentance, baptism, um, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. Those are all those steps that give us that peace, that give us that comfort in life. And when we don't have that, when we don't have that foundation of the gospel, where I don't really know where we could go for that peace. Like everything in the world, it's very temporary. It's very um, self-satisfying. It's all about what makes me feel better, what makes... It's very selfish, I guess. So to have the gospel, to have that thing I can rely on, it brings that peace. Honestly, I was... I don't know where I'd be. I mean, I know myself and I know my tendencies, and I've had that question asked of my family. Like, my dad asked me one time, he's like, where would you be without the gospel? When I was talking to him about it, he about like passed out on the floor. I was like, because I don't know where I'd be. I don't, it'd probably be a scary place just knowing like my family history and like our natural tendencies. So honestly, it could be, it could be pretty bad. So I'm really grateful for all the blessings that have come just knowing that I have a loving Heavenly Father and knowing that I have a Savior, Jesus Christ, which comes full circle into the family. You know, it starts with our loving Heavenly Father, that he, he is our loving Heavenly Father, and He knows me personally. He knows my strengths, He knows my weaknesses. Um, I'm so grateful for that. And I'm grateful that He knows me so much and so well that He knows um, what I've needed during this time in my mission. Um, he's blessed me so much in just six weeks. 
sorry, he's given me someone I can rely on. This is my savior, and even though it's being far away from my family, that can be rough, or it's talking to new people that can be rough. He's given me that way to move on past it, to really love his children, to love everybody around me, people that I've never met before, people that I'm just meeting for the first time and getting to share the gospel with. And I'm so grateful for his love. I'm grateful for the tender mercies, the little things he gives us that helps us make it through the day. And I'm especially grateful for prophets, um, Joseph Smith, all the way down to Thomas S. Monson, who's our current prophet. That he's there to lead us and guide us and help us. That we're not alone. That we have someone who can give us more specific guidance for our day. And I'm grateful for eternal families. And I have a deep testimony of that. Um, and I know through the temple that that's possible in the audiences and the things that we get to do there and participate in. It's very real. The veil is very thin. And, yeah. It's a in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.